A year ago, if Pop accidentally broke a vital part while trying to repair the family radio, it didn't matter much, for he could buy a new one. Today, however, new parts, like new radios, are difficult to get. Therefore, when your radio needs attention, it's important that you call not just a handyman, but a highly skilled radio technician. Good day, and welcome to Mike's Radio Repair and Restoration. Today, we're going to take a look at capacitors that you commonly find in an old tube radio. We're going to learn to identify them kind of by sight, get an idea what's going on. There are many capacitors in the radio that are an immediate replace hands down. Don't even bother testing them. You just replace them. And there's some that you generally don't touch. So we're going to cover that today. And it's important as you're going through and you understand that there are many of these capacitors that need to be replaced in your radio that you get the values right both in micro or picofarad or as well as voltage. So looking at the ratings on them, and if you can't read the ratings on them anymore, you can always go to the schematic and uh, check the parts list, and the parts list will usually give you the, uh, the values and ratings on them. So it's important we get that right. But the important thing is, is that we're going to learn to recognize them and get them dealt with. So with that, let's take a look. Okay, so here we have a lot of the common capacitors you're going to come across in a tube radio. So let's talk about the ones that cause us trouble. Actually, let's change gears on that. Let's talk about the ones that don't cause us trouble. You'll often see these ones here. They look like little dominoes with dots on them. And they come a little bigger and they come a little smaller and slightly different colors. But the dots will represent the rating, how many puff or micro microfarads they are. They are silver mic capacitors, and they don't very often go wrong. So we tend not to replace them um, when we're doing restores unless it's proven that one is absolutely faulty. Um, they're often very key components in RF tuning sections. So we generally leave them alone. We don't replace them. Once again, they seldom go bad. But these guys here, these are the old paper wax standard capacitor. Um, as you can see, this has got a wax coating on it. All it is is foil separated by paper with wax. These go bad. There is no question they go bad. <clears throat> as soon as you see them, don't even bother testing them. Don't wonder if they're good or bad or if they're going to work or not. You replace them. Uh, sight unseen, these leak. They go bad. They go short. They do all kinds of horrible things. They're terrible. Don't bother with them. Get rid of them. Replace them all. These are slightly newer versions of this, and they run in the same category. They go bad as well. Here's, a, here's an old mag oil cap. But, uh, again, these are all immediate, no fooling around, replace them. I know a guy who ran a nice, fancy national receiver that was full of these, didn't bother to replace them. Guess what? One shorted out, and it caused him great grief. The last thing you want to do is damage parts in your radio that you can't get anymore. So don't play around. Replace them. These two guys here fall into the same class. These are known in the trades what are called bumblebee capacitors. And again, the color will denote the specification and size of each of these capacitors. These leak, they go bad, they short. They are no better than these. And again, these are immediate replace. So the silver mic capacitors that look like dominoes stay unless you prove otherwise. Um, sometimes some radios have got disc capacitors in them that look like this. Usually they're a reddish brown. I don't have one to show you. So I just got a a small value blue one here to show you. Um, these ones are electrolytics, and these are often in the power supplies and in audio stages. They are polarized. They are filtering capacitor. They are usually large value, like 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 microfarads. Um, and there are often two or three capacitors built into one unit. Like here's one out of an S38 that's three capacitors built into one can. Um, and on the slightly newer radios, we have these uh, uh, can-style capacitors that are soldered to the chassis. And again, there's three different capacitors in this can. And just to show you 
they go bad. There's no doubt about it. They dry out, they short. Um, they're, again, another number one cause of problems in the radios. They must be replaced. All of your electrolytics must be replaced. And this is looking inside one of these here. And again, all of it is is tinfoil separated by paper, all wound up, and they short. And here's the result here of one shorted. You can see it's quite burnt. And that's what's happened. So we need to change them. All of these, we need to change these out. No, no, yes, no. We're going to replace all of this stuff in our restores. What do we replace them with? These guys here are replaced with a simple film capacitor. Um, they last a good long time. They're extremely affordable. They're much smaller than their, their original counterpart. You know, we can also replace these with uh, metallized polypropylene. I call them chiclets. These uh, are a little bit more heat tolerant, a little bit more accurate, but they'll work, they're a little bit more money, but they'll work quite fine in that type of a job as well. Um, and these guys here, maybe you recognize these already. This is a modern day electrolic, and this one here is uh, 47 microfarads at 450 volts. These will often replace these big guys here. So you may have, uh, uh, like I think this one here now, let me just read this here, I don't my glasses on. This one is a 60, 60 and 220s. So if you had a 60 and 220s, this would replace this great big huge can. Or if you want, you can dig around and you can actually find, if you've got a really nice receiver, and you wanna restore it so it looks like it was originally, you can actually go out and find one of these. Or you can leave it in place and you can tuck these under the chassis so it ha has the original look. But anyways, that is the replacement for those. So that's kind of sort of the scoop on capacitors. We're not going to fool around with this type of stuff. Out it goes, straight into the trash. Same with the electronics. Out they go, straight into the trash. Don't take a wait and see. Don't say, well, my tester said it was good. We have capacitor testers. What your capacitor tester probably doesn't do is it doesn't test them under load at 360 or 450 volts. That's where they begin to break down. And if you've got a coupling capacitor to the next stage, like to an audio tube, and it's shorted and you're getting DC across that capacitor, across one of these capacitors, if it's passing DC, it can load a, an audio tube down until the plate is glowing red hot and burn the tube up and a lot of components at the bottom and maybe potentially hurt the uh, audio output transformer. So we're not going to play around. We're just going to throw them in the garbage. Um, so I'll be getting your information where you can buy replacements affordably. And um, you, uh, they're, they're so affordably, affordable. You can put a bit of a stock in. If you're going to do more than one radio, um, you can put a bit of a stock in. Um, buy them 10 or 25 at a time, uh, each of the given values. It's nice to have stock on hand when a radio comes in. You've got parts and pieces that you can get moving on it right away. Okay, so that kind of sort of covers our little itty bitty tutorial on capacitors. The next things that we're gonna look at, we're gonna actually see these uh, in chassis and in place. We're gonna deal with them, we're gonna replace them. Um, we're gonna learn that like a, uh, a 0 0.05 capacitor, we'll, they don't really make 0.05s anymore. We'll replace it with a 0.047, but we'll get into that as we go through radios that we can make little adjustments to certain capacitors. These guys know these guys are very specific. They have to be replaced with exactly the right value. And again, we generally don't replace these unless they're proven to be faulty. Okay, so that's it. So again, as for all the rest of the YouTubers, please subscribe. Any questions you've got, leave them down below. And we'll see you in the next video. The news from the battlefronts is good. The newest United Nations offensives, the Red Army's middle gun attacks in Russia, and the British move into Jap-held Burma are making good progress. And in North Africa, the Allied pincers are slowly closing around the Germans and Italians as Hitler frantically tries to hold on to prepare the defenses against an Allied invasion of South Europe. In Russia, in the middle gun offensive, the Red Army is sweeping westward at a speed comparable to the Nazi advance eastward last July. They have taken Katamarovka, only 55 miles north of Milorovo, and now threaten the entire railway line from Voronezh to Milorovo. Milorovo is a junction point of the Moscow-Rostov Railroad.
It has already been cut. In Russian hands, it can and probably will be the base of a Russian offensive south to retake Rostov and smash or trap the entire German force in the great Stalingrad salient.